The top stories tonight and why news. Almost 13,000 doses of COVID-19 vaccine have already been waste wasted according to the Department of Health. The Employers' Confederation of the Philippines will not condone alleged no-jab, no-pay scheme issue. Comelec is the launching of Precinct Finder in January 2022. Oil companies to implement another price hike on Tuesday. White House continues to push debunk zero-cost claim on U.S. President Joe Biden's agenda. Landslides and flood waters have taken over Kerala, India, killing at least 24 people in the last four days. Good evening, Philippines and the world. We are now reporting live from Kazan City. Today is Monday, October 18, 2021. I'm Herlene Delgado. Join us in the next hour as we deliver today's top stories around the Philippines and in other parts of the world. I'm Angelo Castro III. We are also seen in 1,935 satellite monitoring centers nationwide and via live streaming worldwide through the UNTV News and Rescue social media accounts and our website, untvweb.com. I am William Theo. First in the news. The COVID-19 reproduction number in the national capital region slides further to 0.57, according to Okta Research Group. The Department of Health also said cases in Metro Manila went down for the past seven days due to the swift isolation and detection. But the authorities continue to remind the public that it is important to follow health protocols because the threat of COVID-19 remains high. Let us all remember na kasalalay po sa bawat isa sa atin kung tayo po ay babalik uli sa alert level 4 o kung tayo po ay babalik na naman dun sa cycle natin na tataas sa mga kaso, bababa, tataas, bababa. So sana po makatulong namin kayong lahat para po tayo ay magtuloy-tuloy na sa pagbabat mag Only 139 areas in Metro Manila remain under granular lockdown, while a total of 19,014 quarantine violators have been recorded in Metro Manila since the implementation of Alert Level 3. As the election season draws near, candidates are already in the process of making their presence felt, but the Department of Interior and Local Government cautions them from conducting events and gatherings. Rosalicos details why. The Department of the Interior and Local Government will meet with the Commission on Elections to discuss the guidelines on the conduct of political events for the 2022 national elections. However, DILG reiterates that large gatherings are still prohibited for this can turn into super spreader events. Definitely po, um, bawal po ang super spreader events. No? So ang palala po ng DILG sa ating mga uh, kumakandidato dito sa ating election uh, 2022 ay dapat po maging ehemplo sila no maging ehemplo sila ng ating mga kababayan dahil hindi pa rin po tapos ang pandemya Dr. Edsel Salvania, a member of the Department of Health Technical Advisory Group is also against holding face-to-face -face or in-person campaigns kung maiiwasan natin yung mga uh, potential super spreader events lalo na kung uh, maramihan talaga yung mga tao iwasan muna natin kasi bagamat binaba natin from alert level 4 nasa alert level 3 pa rin tayo ibig sabihin wala pa tayo dun sa level na pwede po talaga ta nating sabihin na uh, hindi natataas yan Meanwhile, DILG still investigating the Batangas event of presidential aspirant and Manila Mayor Isko Moreno Domagoso held last week. Interior Secretary Eduardo Año earlier said they're looking into a possible health protocols breach. DILG awaits more detailed report from the Philippine National Police. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. Meanwhile, some senators have urged the Department of Labor and Employment, or DOLE, to look into the no-vaccine, no-salary scheme of some employers. Nel Maribohok will tell us why live. Yes, uh, Nel, good evening. Go ahead. 
Good evening, Will. A vaccination card is not a requirement for employment. Senator Franklin Drillon cited Section 12 of the Republic Act Number 11525 or the COVID-19 vaccination program, which clearly states that having a COVID-19 vaccine shall not be considered as an additional mandatory requirement for educational, employment, and other similar government transactions. Senator Joel Villanueva also has the same sentiment, saying the no-jab-no-pay scheme that is allegedly implemented by some companies is illegal. Labor Secretary Silvestre Bello III expressed willingness to probe the no-jab-no-pay policy scheme, but first he calls the labor group to send the details of the said company that engaging in the said scheme. The Associated Labor Unions Trade Union Congress of the Philippines or ALU-TUCP spokesperson Alan Tanhusay said they received reports from some workers regarding the said illegal activities. Meron kasi kaming natanggap na report at uh, ipinasa na namin ito sa Department of Labor Employment na nagsusumbong sa amin yung mga manggagawa at sinasabi nila hindi raw sila pinapasahod at hindi binibigay yung kanilang sahod hanggang hindi sila nagpapakita ng complete vacant card doon sa kanilang employer. According to Employers Confederation of the Philippines President Sergio Ortiz Luis Jr., they will not condone such wrongdoing. We do not uh, subscribe to that because aside from being illegal, it's very possible it's uh, immoral. Well, a valid medical reason why they should do that. Eh? Ortiz said he did not receive any reports yet regarding the said policy, but he urged workers to bring the issue before the Labor Department for appropriate action. Will? Yes, uh, thank you very much. Nel Maribohok reporting live. The Health Department reports there are almost 13,000 COVID-19 vaccine doses that have been wasted as of today. Aiko Miguel will tell us why. A total of 12,970 COVID-19 vaccine doses have been wasted. According to health spokesperson under Secretary Maria Rosario Vergere, this is due to temperature excursions and vaccine transport problems. Merong nagkaroon ng sunog sa Cotobato at dun sa Ilocos Norte dati kung saan yung ibang bakuna natin ay nadamay dun sa pagkasunog. Nagkaroon ng uh, Doon sa bangka na sinasakyan nila, may issue tayo doon na parang nalubog yung ating mga vaccine at transport boxes doon. Aside from this, Vergere said other reasons include some COVID-19 vaccines not having labels or some having particulate matter in them. Hindi ginagamit kapag walang label na sira, dinidiscard natin yan kapag kaganyan. Yung iba naman may reports may mga particulate matters dun sa bakuna. Doon sa ilalim ng bakuna, kapag kaganoon ang itsura ng bakuna, hindi na natin yan pinagagamit. So, dinidiscard. The Department of Health emphasized that waste stage of COVID-19 vaccines should be avoided as much as possible. But if not, 5% waste stage is still acceptable. The Health Department reminds there are ways to reduce vaccine waste stage. This can be minimized by proper stock management, developing a microplan to ensure efficiency of immunization service delivery, monitoring and recording cold chain temperature for each cold chain equipment twice daily, including weekends and holidays, recording vital information when receiving, storing and distributing vaccines, monitoring, maintaining, and routinely repairing cold chain equipment, performing the shake test to make sure that vaccines have not been frozen, strictly following the standard procedure for transporting vaccines and others, Meanwhile, based on the National Task Force Against COVID-19's report on Saturday, the Philippines has already received 91.3 million doses of COVID-19 vaccines. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Local government units in Metro Manila unanimously decide to close cemeteries from October 29 to November 2 to avoid the spread of the virus. The council's decision was supported by the Department of the Interior and local government. J.P. Nunez details why. The closing of cemeteries as well as columbarium aim to avoid massive gatherings that increases the risk of coronavirus disease transmission. 
The Department of the Interior and Local Government added that despite the decrease in the number of COVID-19 cases, the threat of the virus remains and LGUs must strictly enforce health protocol measures. Sinusuportahan po namin yung kanilang desisyon na isara ang mga sementeryo ngayong undas. Uh, tama po ang mga mayors na mas maganda na wag na muna tayong uh, magkumpul-kumpulan sa mga sementeryo. Today, San Juan City already allowed early visitors who booked their appointments online. They are required to present the confirmatory texts and identification cards upon entry. A maximum of 300 will be allowed per 2 hours lot. So, pinapayagan ho natin hanggang dalawang magkasama kapag dadalaw. Ito ay dahil ang ating sementeryo ho ay posibleng magkasikip-sikipan kung sakaling masyadong marami po ang dadalaw at yung pong ayaw natin mangyari, lalong-lalo na ngayon na bagamat tayo po sa alert level 3 na gusto nating tuluyan pang bumaba ang bilang ng mga kaso dito po sa San Juan at syempre sa buong Metro Manila at sa buong bansa. Meanwhile, the Paranaque City also opened its cemeteries for early visitors. May mga briefing na rin tayo sa mga security na yung health protocol must be properly observed. Hindi po muna sa open space Wala na tayong face mask, wala na, hindi po po pwede. Kinakailangan pong implement pa rin natin yung simple health protocol by wearing face mask pa rin po. Cemeteries in Metro Manila are only allowed 30% capacity under alert level 3 restrictions. JP Nunez, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Meanwhile, the Department of Health, or DOH, reported 6,943 new COVID-19 cases today, bringing the country's total COVID-19 cases to 2,727,286. Total recoveries climbed to 2,573,161 after 19,687 more patients survived from the disease. The DOH also reported 86 new fatalities, pushing the death toll to 40,761. Meanwhile, the overall global COVID-19 caseload has reached to 240,754,836, while the deaths have surged to 4,900,140, according to the Johns Hopkins University. The United States is still the worst hit country with the highest number of cases and deaths at 44,934,620 and 724,323 respectively according to the CSSE, followed by India and Brazil. With only a few months away from the 2022 national and local elections, the Commission on Elections is eyeing to relaunch its precinct finder in January. Meanwhile, the COMELEC will also discuss the appeal to extend the voter registration for overseas Filipino workers. Harleen Delgado will tell us why. The precinct finder for next year's elections is expected to be operational come January 2022. This, as the Commission on Elections says, they will have to wait first for the final list of voters. Currently, a vulnerability assessment and penetration testing is being done for the application at the Department of Information and Communications Technology, or DICT. Actually, it's a voter verifier and a precinct finder at the same time. We need the final data and the final POP po so that the voters can uh, search their voter and at the same time their polling centers. Kamalek Chairperson Sheriff Abba says they are expecting up to 500,000 additional new registered voters with the extension. Currently, there are 63.6 .6 million registered voters in the country. Meanwhile, Senator Aimee Marcos has appealed to Kamalek to consider extending the overseas voter registration as well in selected consulates including Hong Kong and Macau. Some overseas Filipinos have yet to register, citing long lines, limited registration slots, and limited free days. The poll body has vowed to take up the matter at the Onbank this Wednesday. Pag-uusapan namin, Your Honors, kung kaya pa namin i-stretch yung sa OFO. Okay, stretch na stretch na po siya, pero itry pa din, itry pa din namin. Magandang idea yun, Your Honors, na we will cater doon lang sa parang NCR nila, yung pinakamaraming hindi pa nakapag-register. 
The COMELEC's 26.7 billion peso budget for 2022 is now deemed submitted to the plenary following its approval by the Senate Finance Committee. But lawmakers and the poll body are hopeful that the budget cuts will be restored to ensure a COVID-proof elections and to increase the honoraria of teachers who will serve in next year's polls. Horilin Delgado, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. The Aksyon Democratico headed by presidential aspirant Manila Mayor Isko Moreno Dumagoso is not worried over the recent resignation of their party member, former Solicitor General Florin Hilbay. Dante Amento tells us why, live. Yes, Dante, good evening. Good evening, Harleen. Aksyon Democratico Party Chairman Ernest Ramel in a statement says, Though they have lost a good member in the person of former Solicitor General Florin Hilbay, they gained thousands of members belonging to different and bigger political parties. Ramel further added they are still receiving queries and applications from other candidates even after the filing of the Certificate of Candidacy. These allegedly prove that the party is continuously getting support and gaining strength. Mayor Dumagoso stresses they are surprised by the support they received even from the people. Tuloy-tuloy lang. Dumarami pa. Oh. Agulat nga ako eh. Daming billboard eh. Straightforward ka. I don't know them. I really don't know them. Pero dami kong billboard. Yan ang katotohanan. Hindi pwedeng ikubli. Eh hanggang Maguindanao, oh. Aba, hanggang Visayas, Mindanao, Northern Luzon. Ay, nagulat ako in a tweet, former Solicitor General Florin Hilbay has announced today his resignation from Aksyon Democratico Party. And one of the reasons he gave is to support a presidential bid of Vice President Denny Robredo, which allegedly a much better candidate in the or in these crucial elections. Meanwhile, Vice President Denny Robredo today attended the launch of Bangsamoro for Lenny. This is a group of Muslim women supporting her candidacy for president in next year's election. During her visit to Marawi City on Monday, Robredo also looked into the previously war-torn city as the end of the Marawi siege marks its fourth anniversary on October 23rd. Meanwhile, Harleen presidential aspirant Leode de Guzman disclosed that he is willing to withdraw his presidential bid if Vice President Lenny Robredo vows to push his platforms. And that's the latest live from Quezon City Back to you, Harleen. Thank you, Dante Amento, reporting live. Another round of oil price hike will be implemented on Tuesday. Filipino Shell Petroleum Corporation, Petron Sea Oil, Philippines Incorporated, and Clean Fuel will increase prices of gasoline, diesel, and kerosene in effective 6 a.m. of October 19. This will be the eighth straight week of increases. The Makabayan bloc in the House of Representatives is urging President Rodrigo Duterte to certify as urgent the proposed bill that seeks transparency in determining price increases of petroleum products in the country. The data from the Department of Energy shows a total net increase of 17 pesos and 85 centavos per liter for gasoline, 16 pesos and 50 centavos per liter for diesel, and 14 pesos and 19 centavos per liter of kerosene. Transportation, franchising and regulatory board issues show cost order versus EDSA busway consortiums due to fewer bus deployment. The Department of Transportation plans to recommend increased passenger capacity in public utility vehicle. Ashra Kadapan Jr. explains why. The Land Transportation Franchising and Regulatory Board recently records as low as about 120 bus units only from each of the two bus consortiums plying in the EDSA busway. This is while the consortiums agreed to deploy a total of at least about 300 to 450 bus units. The agency says the shortage has correlation with some reports they receive that some bus companies have not been releasing the salaries of their bus drivers. 
This is despite receiving the payout from the service they rendered under the service contracting program where drivers should receive 30% of it. LTFRB Chairman Martin Delgar III, however, emphasizes that it is the company's obligation to pay their employees. Delgra also confirms that the fund for their payables have already been made available to the land bank. But delays in the processing of transfer of funds to the accounts of the payees are being encountered on the bank's end. Today, noon, I have called the attention of Land Bank again to triple their uh, daily output doon sa pinoprocess nila yung tinatawag na ADA, no? yung authority to debit account uh, para mapabilis yung pagdi-debit na mga accounts of the uh, amounts that we have given to Land Bank. To be credited. With this, the LTFRB orders the consortium to explain why their agreement should not be cancelled, suspended, or be fined from the incident. UNTV News and Rescue tried to get the side of at least one of the consortiums, but they have yet to provide any information. Meanwhile, the Department of Transportation finds ways to help the drivers and operators of public utility vehicles against oil price hike instead of fare increase as ordered by Transportation Secretary Arthur Tugade. Transportation Assistant Secretary Mark Stephen Pastor says the DOTR has programs for affected sectors including the service contracting. The agency is also looking to recommend to the Interagency Task Force for the Management of Emerging Infectious Diseases to increase the passenger capacity of PUVs. The increase will be significant while I could not give you the exact figure po at this point in time dahil ang gusto po ni Secretary Tugade na ang ating magiging proposal sa IATF ay hindi lamang po based on technical expertise but also yung medical back up by medical studies na uh, safe po itong pag-increase natin. The DOTR has also been coordinating with the Department of Energy in terms of possibly providing discounts in gasoline stations and fuel subsidy for drivers. Asher Kadapan Jr., UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Some 2.9 million customers of Maynidad Water Services Incorporated will be affected by the water service interruptions next week. This is due to the pipe realignment for DPWH flood control project from 25 to 85 hours between October 25 to October 28, 2021. The service interruptions will cover Las Piñas, Makati, Manila, Paranaque, Pasay, Bacoor, Cavite City, Imus, Kawit, Noveleta, and Rosario in Cavite. Customers are advised to store enough water that is enough for four days water service interruption, especially in areas close to pipe realignment. Kaya rin po namin maagang inabisohan yung aming mga customers na maapektuhan para naman po may ma enough time pa po para makapag-ipon sila nung gagamitin nila for that 24-hour duration na mawawala ng tubig. So, Ang nakikita po namin, yung deployment po ng water tankers ay concentrate po karamihan dun sa mga areas sa Sampalok, Manila na halos tatlong araw po mawawalan sila ng tubig ng tuloy-tuloy. Mainiland will deploy 60 water tankers in the affected areas. Priority in water ration is hospitals and other medical facilities affected by water service interruptions. And for the news abroad, the White House stands firm over U.S. President Joe Biden's debunked Build Back Better agenda that will cost a zero to the average American taxpayer. Ruth Bahe, details why, live. Good evening, Ruth. Good evening, Elsie. The U.S. Congress Joint Committee on Taxation estimated that the Build Back Better Reconciliation Package will only raise $2.1 trillion through taxes over 10 years. It falls far short of the $3.5 trillion cost that U.S. President Joe Biden is stating. The Wall Street Journal editorial board argued the zero-cost agenda is based on budget gimmickry and that the real cost will be at least $5 trillion and probably far more. Glenn Kessler, fact-checker of the Washington Post, similarly called it misleading. He argued that lawmakers play all sorts of budget games to achieve the mythical zero cost within the 10-year budget framework. Kessler said the bill's impact on the deficit could be as low as zero or as high as $1.75 trillion over 10 years. The White House Twitter post over Biden's Build Back Better agenda sparked a lot of criticism from netizens. 
However, Biden's administration have repeatedly claimed that it will cost zero dollars due to other revenue-generating schemes. It will also be upset by tax increases if big corporations and the wealthy will pay their fair share. Back to you, Elsie. Thank you, Ruth Bahe. Australia's Chief Medical Officer Professor Paul Kelly said that from Tuesday, all fully vaccinated individuals living in the South Island of New Zealand can travel to Australia. This is if they provide a negative PCR test within 72 hours of departure. Travelers will also have to declare they have not been in the North Island for any period of time over the last 14 days. All flights from the North Island will be classed as red zone, meaning passengers must isolate for 14 days upon their arrival. A New Zealand government spokesperson said the news does not affect Aotearoa's border settings, which means anyone traveling overseas would need to go through an MIQ facility on return. Western Australia celebrates as they reach a remarkable fundraising record for this year's Teletons for the state sick children. Mavian Dog details why live. Go ahead, Maeve. LC West Australians achieved a record-breaking result of more than $62 million for sick children in Western Australia. This toppled last year's record of $43.6 million, which now marks the 12th consecutive year that the telethon has broken its previous year's record. This year saw big donations and acts of fundraising efforts from various organizations, including the state and federal government. Western Australia's Premier Mark McGowan also expressed the state government's ongoing vital support to WA's world-class child health researchers to better understand and treat diseases and chronic conditions. Telethon Chairman Richard Gorder described the support received as inspiring and also praised the beneficiaries for doing great things with huge amounts of passion and energy. Telethon was first established in 1968 and has since been an annual event that usually lasts for 26 hours. Elsie? Thank you, Mavian Dog. Landslides and floodwaters have taken over Kerala, the southwest state of India, killing at least 24 people in the last four days. Marvi Delphine will tell us why live. Yes, Marvi? Since the heavy rainfall in Kerala, India began on Friday, many rivers swelled, causing floods and destroying and sweeping away homes, forcing residents to evacuate. The Indian Meteorological Department stated that low-pressure areas in the southeastern Arabian Sea have caused such heavy rainfall and was expected to ease today. Of the 24 deaths reported, a family of six, which included a 75-year-old grandmother and three children, were killed after their home was flooded. An additional eight children were also said to have died, with three found buried in debris in the Iduki district. LC, over 100 relief camps have been established across Kerala, catering for evacuees. Military helicopter services have also been deployed to aid in providing supplies to those trapped and unable to reach relief camps. Meanwhile, the Prime Minister of India, Narendra Modi, tweeted his condolences to the many families affected by the floods, whilst also announcing the readily available help of officials. Elsie? Thank you, Marvi Delphine. And those are the reasons behind the news in other parts of the globe. I am Elsie Marcos, live from Auckland, New Zealand. Good evening. The Philippine Movie Press Club presented the best morning show host to Puya Daniel Razon at the recent 34th PMPC Star Awards for Television. Angela Lagunzad, Angelo Diego Castro III, Rina Villamor Camara, Beth Santiago, Erika Kikay Honrado, Ninang Riza Matibag Muyot were also given recognitions, as well as mainstay doctors Dr. Joseph Lee, Sara Barba Cabudil, Janice Devera, and Bong Santiago. The award is based on contents or programs aired in 2019. Kuya Daniel, meanwhile, expressed his appreciation for the prestigious award. Sa bumubuo po ng Philippine Movie Press Club.
Thank you for this award. It is with pleasure that I, on behalf of Good Morning Kuya co-hosts, receive this wonderful recognition. I believe that PMPC knows and recognizes the many works that come into broadcasting a show. This award means a lot to the show and the rest of the cast of Good Morning Kuya. And I would like to mention my appreciation to my co-hosts who have been there day in and day out, and the men and women who are working relentlessly in ensuring that the show airs daily. I appreciate all your hard work and dedication. Most importantly, salamat po sa Diyos for this. To God be the glory. And before we close, we will leave you with a word, giving glory to God. From the book of Romans, chapter 12, verse 14, it says, Bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. Those are the reasons behind the news, October 18, 2021. I'm Herlene Delgado. Reasons we deliver to you as they unfold. I'm Angelo Castro III. And because we need to know, we will always ask why. I am William Theo. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Definitely, po, um, bawal po ang super spreader events, no? So ang paalala po ng DILG sa ating mga uh, kumakandidato dito sa ating eleksyong uh, 2022 ay dapat po maging ehemplo sila. No? Maging ehemplo sila ng ating mga kababayan dahil hindi pa rin po tapos ang pandemya. Pag-uusapan namin, Your Honors, kung kaya pa namin ni stretch yung sa OFO. Eh, stretch na stretch na po siya, pero itry pa din, itry pa din namin. Magandang idea yun, honors, na we will cater doon lang sa parang NCR nila, yung pinakamaraming hindi pa nakapag-raise po. Hindi ginagamit kapag walang label na sira, so dinidiscard natin yan kapag kaganyan. Yung iba naman, may reports, may mga particulate matters dun sa bakuna. Kapag kaganoon ang itsura ng bakuna, hindi na natin yan pinagagamit, so dinidiscard. discard.